Family Theater presents Barbara Stanwyck, Elizabeth Scott, and Lewis Hayward. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Barbara Stanwyck and Lewis Hayward in Days of Grace. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Lisbeth Scott. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. Tonight, Family Theater takes great pleasure in presenting Days of Grace. Starring Barbara Stanwyck as Joan Morley, Louis Hayward as Gerald, with Dan O'Hurley as David. The time, September 1939. The scene, Paris. Joan Morley's suite in the Hotel Elysee. Hello, Father. Hello, Joan. Is it true about England declaring war? Two hours ago. How are things in Paris? It's a madhouse. Oh, Father, how could this have happened? Where is it going to end? Don't ask me. I'm the prophet who wrote that there couldn't be a war this year, remember? I'm leaving for London on the one o'clock boat train. Good. I'll have your passage to the States on the first sailing I can get. Is the paper calling you back to New York? No, of course not, but there's no sense in you... Look, Father, if you're staying in England, so am I. We'll settle it when you get here. All right, I'll see you tonight. Right. Good night, Joan. Goodbye, Father. Welcome back, Miss Jones. Thank you, Myra. Your father's at the office. I know. I phoned him from the station. Oh, Mr. Gerald's here. Gerald? He's in the library. He just now came. Oh, thank you. Yes, Miss. Gerald, I'm so glad you... Oh. Hello, Joan. I'm sorry I couldn't meet the train, but... What is it? What's wrong? You're in uniform. <laughs> Naturally. But so soon, I, I, I didn't know. You knew I was a reserve officer. Right now, I have a job to do in France. You're going to the front right away? Mm hmm Tomorrow, quite likely. No. Oh, I, I should have expected it, I suppose, that, that you would be going. It's only that, well, till now, the war hasn't seemed quite real. Not actually related to me, that is. But, but to walk in like this and find you in uniform... John, I, I... I never dreamed that it would mean so much to you. Oh, no, that's, that's not true. I, I dreamed about it, all right. I just never dared hope. But, Joan... Couldn't it all be said another way? That this has suddenly made you realize that, that you love me? I, I don't know. Because if it does mean that... Joan, will you marry me? Marry you? Yes, I've wanted to ask you for months. And now that I'm going away, I... Tomorrow. You're going tomorrow. Please, Joan. Find it in your heart to say you will. But I'm not sure. I'm sure enough for both of I... us. Oh, everything is so mixed up, confused. I... I, I love you, I... I need you so. You need me? If I could know before I start out that you'd be here, waiting when I get back. Oh, please, you can't say no. You're right, Gerald. I can't say no. Oh, my dear. Uh, Gerald, there's not much time. We'll have to be married at once. Oh, no, Joan. But I thought that was what you wanted. A seven and sixpenny ceremony in some judge's chambers. Oh, you deserve more than that. A whole world more. And you'll have it. We're going to wait. Wait till when? Till it's all over. Everyone says it can't last beyond um, three months. You're sure you prefer it that way? It must be that way. You see, I... <laughs> I want you for my wife, not my widow. Dear Gerald, I'm disappointed about your Christmas leave being cancelled. 
Father and I had planned a real holiday for you, but perhaps before too long, you'll... Joan, darling, I've just heard from my brother David in Canada. He's coming over to join my regiment and will arrive in England on April the 16th. Will you meet him for me? He has dark hair, wears a moustache, and is somewhat tall. Dear Gerald, I know how thrilled you must be to have home leave promised at last. Too bad it's not quite in time for you to meet your brother. But I've memorized your description of him, and I'll be at the station bright and early the day he arrives. just arrived. That must be the one that met the Canadian ship. Oh. Hello. Hello. Are you David? Nay, lassie. My name's not David. But I wish it was, oh. I do. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought... Ah, oh, it didn't give it a thought. I hope you find him, the lucky lad. Ooh. Oh. I'm sorry. Wasn't looking where I was going. Oh, no, neither was I. Clumsy of me. Oh, that's all right. I'm, uh, I'm supposed to meet someone. So am I. Well, maybe we can help each other. My man is about uh, five feet nine, light hair, and he'd be in uniform. Captain. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't seen him. He's my brother. What's your victim like? Well, he's dark, and he... Oh, good heavens, your brother? You're not David. Yes, that's my name. David Lachlan. I'm Joan. Joan Morley. Joan? Oh, of course. Gerald wrote me about meeting you ages ago. By the way, where is Gerald? Oh, still at the front. He has a leave coming up, but not until next week. Meanwhile, my instructions are to make the prodigal welcome and show him the town. Ah, <laughs> fine. I thought we might start with the National Gallery tomorrow and the Crystal Palace on Friday, and perhaps Saturday, boating on the Thames. How's that for a schedule? Terrible. <laughs> All right, it's terrible. <laughs> Look, I've lived most of my life in London. Now, just because I've spent a few years learning the cattle business in Manitoba and down in Texas, that doesn't mean I must be treated like a tourist on his first trip to Europe. You said Texas. I didn't know you'd lived in the States. Certainly. I was in New York for a while, too. Well, no wonder you seem... Yes? Go on. It's funny. What is? You're older than he is. Gerald? Yes, four years. I expected you to be younger. I don't know why. Uh, did you like it? New York, I mean. Well, the second greatest city in the world. Oh, and I suppose London is the first. Far and away, and I'll prove it to you. Come on, I'm going to show you a London you didn't even know existed. And on the right, we have the Limehouse Fish Market. Perhaps not the most beautiful sight in London. <laughs> but certainly the most unmistakable. Exactly, exactly. In fact, exactly. Look, Mr. Lachlan, your travel tour on a two-penny bus is fascinating, Tuppenny, but... Tuppenny, when will you learn? All right, Tuppenny. But it happens I'm starved and not for fish. <laughs> there it is. But it's only a house. We drove all that way out here just to see that. Aha, but it's unique, that house is. Oh, and just why is it so unique, Mr. Bones? Within these walls, nobody famous was born. Nobody famous lived, and nobody famous died. <laughs> Only one of its kind in London. <laughs> well, we ought to chip in and buy it a plaque. <laughs> David, uh -huh. I do love this place. But Gerald's train gets in so early in the morning. Shouldn't we go? Not yet. Look, look, Joan. Ah, I... Monsieur Lachlan, all has been satisfactory, no? Splendid, Anton, as always. Especially the music. <laughs> and Madame was also oh, pleased. Yes, Anton. What's this they're playing now? Oh, uh, this. This is a melody of my own. You like it? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you, Madame. Monsieur Lachlan is an old customer, and to have his wife like my melody, oh, say, it pleases me greatly. Oh, but I'm not his... Here you are, Anton. Oh, thank you. Oh, but it is so much. Oh, that's not a tip. It's for the melody. I want it reserved only for... for Madame. Never play it when she's not here. Do you understand? Ah, but certainly. Perfectly, Monsieur. David, what made him think? Does it matter? Yes. Joan... Have you any idea what this week has meant to me? Oh, that music is lovely, isn't it? Joan, Joan, we've laughed a lot. 
But we've laughed because we were both afraid of words. I don't think I'll ever forget this melody. We can't be afraid any longer. David, it's late. Let's go home. Joan, I'm coming in. No, please. I've got to talk to you. But we... Joan. No, David, no. Oh, David. Joan, darling. Why did you have to kiss me? Why couldn't you have left things as they were? Why? Because I don't believe in denying the things I feel, even to myself. Don't say any more. Joan, listen to me. We belong together. With, with lots of people, it's, it, it's war hysteria. With you and me, it would have happened anyhow. I've known that from the first moment. And so have you. But, David, Gerald comes home tomorrow. I suppose he does. Why? What are you talking about? You don't know? No. I'm engaged to Gerald. You're engaged to him? I thought, of course, you knew that he'd written you. No. It happened the day before he went away. Even now, I, I'm not quite sure how or why. There wasn't logic or reason to anything those first days. I've always been fond of Gerald, and then suddenly, that day when I came in and saw him in uniform... But you don't love him. I'm going to marry him. No, Joan, you're going to marry me. I can't, David. We can't do that to him. But do you think I want to hurt him any more than you do? We didn't make this happen, but it has. And I know Gerald doesn't want what doesn't belong to him. I do belong to him. You don't. You can't. This is, this is our life, our future. Tonight and tomorrow and a thousand tomorrows beyond. You've no right to throw those away. Oh, please, David, stop. Joan, look at me. No. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me you don't love me. You know I can't. Joan. I do love you. I've never said that to any man, not even to Gerald. I love you. I love you. But I'm going to marry him. These last few days were never meant to be, and we're going to forget them. Do you understand, David? Gerald comes home tomorrow, and we're going to forget them. <laughs> Yes, Gerald? What happened between you and David before I got home? What happened? <laughs> it seems more than just a, just a coincidence. Half a dozen times now, I've made plans for the three of us to do things together. <laughs> They've never worked out. Tonight's just another example. I'm sure he understood about joining us at the theater. Oh, David's been busy and he forgot, that's all. <laughs> well, I hope so. I couldn't believe that you and he just didn't hit it off. Oh, but we did. I liked David tremendously. Of course, there's another possibility. What is that? might be a girl who kept him away. Yes, perhaps that's it. Perhaps it is a girl. Well, it seems foolish to wait much longer. I... Yes? Oh, David, there you are. <laughs> We'd almost given you up. Hello, Gerald. Hello. You aren't still planning on the theater, Gerald? Certainly, why not? But haven't you heard the news? There's a big push on. All leaves are canceled. We leave for the front in the morning. Oh, no, David, I can't let you... And, uh, and Gerald, it's... It's so soon. The boat goes from Brighton at 10 sharp. Oh, there's a train from Victoria at 7. Well, I'll run along now. I have a lot of packing to do. Good night. Oh, uh, and Joan, if, if I shouldn't see you in the morning, goodbye. Goodbye, David. I'll help you pack. There's plenty of time for that. I, uh, I, I want to talk to you, Joan, about our engagement. All right. What is it? Well, I, I was going to suggest forgetting the whole thing. Forgetting it? Gerald. Yes, I, uh, I think we ought to call it off. But why? Why should we? Well, obviously, I was, I was wrong about how long the war will last, and... Oh, Joan, can't you understand? I'm trying to give you your out, if you'll take it. Gerald. I've seen what's up, and I know it isn't anyone's fault. Oh, you're wrong. You're wrong, Gerald. I'm wrong? Did you think of me a moment ago, or of David? <laughs> you see, the people we love are the people we fear for. Be honest, Joan, and be sensible. That sort of sacrifice is so futile. We'd all be unhappy. I... I didn't want it to be like this, believe me. I'm so sorry. So terribly sorry. I know. I, I wasn't sure myself what it meant to be in love. Not until I... Joan, please. You don't have to tell but me. But I want to. I want you to understand. It's difficult to believe that anything could happen so quickly, so surely and completely as this did. 
I do understand. Perfectly. Gerald, if, if only it hadn't been you. Chelsea, 2871, please. What are you doing? David's club. He should be there by now. Hello? Lieutenant Lachlan, please. Uh, tell him it's Miss Morley calling. You know, Joan, I, I'm glad we had this talk just now. You can be married before David leaves. Tonight? Hello? Just a moment. Here you are. You're sure, Gerald? It couldn't be any other way. He's waiting, John. Hello, David. David, you'd better come back here. Yes. Oh, yes, darling, right away. Are you sure the lieutenant understood the transport was to sail from Brighton, sir? Yes, Carter. They drove down here last night after the wedding. Oh, here they are now. Gerald! You just made it. They've already given the last call aboard. Take my bag, Carter. Right, sir. You two won't have much time for goodbyes, I'm afraid. Well, I, I'll go aboard. Gerald, I, I still don't know how to thank you. You found happiness, Joan. So I found my thanks. Goodbye. Wait, Gerald. Thank you for that. Goodbye. Darling. Oh, David. I can't let you go. I can't. It won't be long, Joan. And then there's, there's so much ahead for us. I love you. Always, wherever you are. I love you. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. You must come aboard, sir. The gang plank is All right, up. Carter. Goodbye, Joan. And God bless you. I'll be thinking, thinking every moment. Goodbye, David. Goodbye. Goodbye. Months have passed since David and Gerald departed for France. Now, in an officer's billet just behind the front lines... Oh, there you are, David. What's up? What did the Major want? Nothing much. Just my leave, that's all. What? It's cancelled. You and I have become so necessary to this army. <laughs> we can't be spared at the same time. But Joan's expecting you. Perhaps I can get the Major to let me stay behind. You'll do nothing of the kind. Go on to London. And, Gerald, I want you to see Joan, will you? All right. I mean, see a lot of her. Her letters have been pretty blue lately. Try to get her out of it. I will. But I still wish you'd let me take your place. Not a chance. You go ahead and give Joan my love. Oh, and <laughs> tell her I promise to be out of the trenches by Christmas. Miss Joan, Mr. Gerald is here. Tell him I'll be right down. Very well, miss. Joan? Yes, father? Hadn't I better come with you? No, please don't. But are you sure it's wise? Am I sure? No. No, I'm not sure of anything. But I'm going to do it anyway. Hello, Gerald. Hello, Joe. You look well. Was it a good crossing? Perfect. Sit down, Gerald. Thanks. It's rotten luck, David's leave being cancelled like that. When, when... When did you see him last? Why, yesterday. How was he? How did he look? Oh, never better. Only he says you're worrying too much. And you're to quit it. Gerald, how long is your leave? Five days. Five days. <laughs> you say that as though it were a lifetime. No, it's just that... Oh, you, you can't know what things have been like over here. Always too gay or always too sad. There doesn't seem to be any middle ground at all these days. Well, if I'm to have my choice, I'll take it gay. Yes, London owes you that. And five days is such a little time. Gerald, suppose we were to try to forget the war, both of us. Forget the war? Yes. I know you're fed up with it, and so am I. I'm sick to death of casualty lists, of dotted lines drawn on a map, of battles being fought over dinner tables. You have five days, Gerald. At least let them be free of that. Oh, there's nothing in the world I'd like better. I had made plans for all three of us. Well, uh, we'll just have to make it the two of us instead. Right. And we'll drink a toast to the missing comrade in every club in London. No, no, we won't. John. Well, how can we forget the war if we keep talking about David? Oh, that hardly sounds like the speech of a devoted wife, but uh, I know what you mean. When do we start? <laughs> tea that tastes like tea. Music that sounds like music. Now I know that I'm really home again. <laughs> the boy hasn't changed much, has it? I remember I came here years ago, and except for the uniforms, it looks just the same. Yes, as a matter of fact... Oh, look. What is it? That fellow who's just going out. 
He's Martin from the Black Hawks. Their village is in the village right next to ours. I'll ask him to join no, us. No, no, please don't. But he may have left there since I did, and he's a friend of David's. Patsy. Gerald, let's let him go. Come on, I, I'd like to dance. Right you are. That's the best idea yet. <laughs> Of course I liked it, Gerald. It, it was the best review I've seen in years. And Gracie Fields is marvelous. But you didn't laugh. I watched you. When everyone else was screaming, you just sat there. <laughs> you were laughing enough for the two of us. <laughs> now you have me. <laughs> Where now, Joan, eh? How about a supper club? Did you like? Good. Taxi! Taxi, here! <laughs> You've planned everything else. Did you arrange for the chestnut trees to be in bloom, too? Oh, I had some collaboration on that. Do you think we should turn back now, or do you want to go on further? Oh, let's go on. It's early. If you only knew how good it seems. Look, those planes. They're pretty in formation like that, aren't they? Are they? You know, David and I had quite an argument about planes. He said they're sure to change the entire strategy of the war. Personally, I... Gerald, look, we, we came to ride, so why don't we? Come on, I'll race you to the crossroads. Oh, all right. Why did we have to come here? Well, why not? This ah, is... Captain Lachlan, good evening. Hello, Anton. Oh, and Madam David Lachlan. Oh, it is so good to see you. Thank you. And if you excuse me, but one moment. Anton, wait. Well, what's he up to? Gerald, I'd, I'd rather go somewhere else. Now, look, you've engineered all the rest of my leave. Surely I should decide where we're going to spend my last well, evening. there are other restaurants. Yes, but none like Anton's. This place has been a haunt of David's and mine for years. Why, I just realized. Anton knew you were David's wife. Yes, I, I've been here before. John, what's wrong? Nothing. You're not angry because I got talking about the war this afternoon? Of course I'm not angry. You, you can't forget it, neither can I. Gerald, let's not stay here any longer. But we just came. And listen, the music's marvelous. It's your last night home. Let's go someplace where we can celebrate. Where there's dancing. Uh, another kind of place, anywhere. <laughs> all right, all right. But let's have dinner first. Please, Gerald, please. I, I want to go. Will you take me away from here? John. Of course I will. But, Father, you shouldn't have waited up. It's so late. I just wanted to say goodbye to Gerald and wish him luck. Thank you, sir. Take care of yourself. Let's hear from you. I'll do both. Good. Well, I'll say good night to you. Good night, Father. Good night, sir. Well, John, another goodbye. I'll come to the train in the morning. No, I won't hear of it. You've worn yourself out giving me a holiday. You need to get some rest. Oh, I'm all right. You've been wonderful. I, I can't thank you enough. It wouldn't have been anything without you. Gerald, you have enjoyed these few days. Oh, more than I can say. You've given me something to take back and... something to remember. That was what I wanted. Well, what do you want me to tell David? Nothing. Nothing. Joan, what's come over you? David talks of you all the time, but you... Why, you scarcely mention his name. You've changed somehow. I haven't changed, Gerald. But you have. You're... Oh, I don't know. Detached. As if you're standing outside yourself, looking on. And you're so strange about David. I don't like it. David understands. Believe me. Then I'm to give him no message? My love is always with him. He knows that. All right, Joan. I'll go along now. Wait. I suppose that was for David. Yes. That was for David. Goodbye, Gerald. It was for you, David. Only for you. Joan. Well, Father, it's, it's over. I don't know how you did it. I wanted to do it. To make these days everything Gerald hoped they'd be, because... He may never be coming back to London either. My dear girl. I heard Gerald once. I heard him terribly. But now, in a way, I've made that up to him. He was happy, Father. And he never could have been if he'd known. If he had his five days. Five days of grace. And I gave them to him. But he's sure to find out now about David. Of course he will. But it will be there at the front. Where one more death is such a little thing. Some officer will say it so casually. Too bad about your brother, Lachlan. Strange that it had to happen the very day you left on leave. And then Gerald will know. Oh, Joan. It's clear now. 
And I'm sure that what I've done is right. It's the living who matter. It must always be. We do owe an obligation to the dead, but we owe an even greater obligation to the living. While they are the living. start again. When we think of family prayer, we usually picture mothers, fathers, and their children gathered in the home, saying their prayers together for a few minutes in peace and harmony. When this can be done, it's a beautiful and rewarding moment of the day. Thousands of families in our country are restoring the old time-tested values of actually gathering together in prayer. But we have to remember that many, many of our families are or will be scattered. Military service, business, the trades, the professions we're trained in, tear us apart. But this doesn't mean we love each other less. The important thing to remember is that actually, we need never grow apart. We need never fear for the loss of our frame of reference. We need never have that sense of feeling alone in the world. We can preserve the great value of family unity. We know our own, and our own know us as few others will take the trouble to know us. And it is prayer for each other that can and will bind us all to each other in a real and valid union. We can bring all of us together at some time each day in a unity that comes from God's protection of families that remain faithful to him in simple and humble prayer. Though we be at opposite ends of the earth, we're united. And in this great and wholesome way, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Days of Grace, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Lewis Hayward. Elizabeth Scott was your hostess. Others in the cast were Dan O'Hurley, Herb Rawlinson, Marjorie Bennett, Jack Raymond, and Alec Harford. The script was written by True Boardman and Therese Lewis, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us next week at the same time when Family Theater will present James Whitmore and Jean Raymond in Mademoiselle from San Antoine. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.